It is said that the fox marriage taboo is not to be seen by humans when they get married. So the foxes only marry when it starts the solar rain. Anyone found by the foxes will be in trouble. It happened to be a sunny day and it was raining. The boy stood at the door looking at the sky. The mother came to warn her son not to think about going out. This weather is usually the fox wane day. If you are found, will certainly be killed by the foxes. But the young boy did not know this. Driven by curiosity, he did not listen to his mother's advice and went to the woods alone and wanted to see the legendary fox marriage. But he didn't have to walk long when suddenly smoke began to surround him. The boy suddenly lost his way. At that moment he heard a sound from the front. He hid behind a tree in fear. The next second, a team of eerie figures came out of the fog. The two men in front of the group each carried a lantern. They moved slowly and had to stop every three steps. Sometimes they turned their heads and looked sideways. Sometimes they crouched on their knees, showed a state of fear of being seen by humans. When the group came closer, the boy found that the foxes all had fox faces and human bodies. Their faces were also covered with foundation. Their hair and whiskers were like plush dolls. The bride was dressed in a white dress with a white cloth on her head. The groom wore a black dress with a red scarf on his head. Looks very strange. The boy was so scared that he could only hide behind a tree to hide himself, not daring to make any noise. <laughs> The boy was so frightened that he rushed home. However, his mother was waiting at the door with a serious expression. The mother said to her son that an angry fox fairy had just claimed that you had seen something you shouldn't have seen, so you cannot be allowed to return home. Then she took out a dagger and handed it to her son and wanted him to kill himself to pay for his sins, but he still had a chance to live and that was to take the dagger to beg the fox fairy for forgiveness. But the boy did not know where the foxes lived. The mother said they were at the end of the rainbow. The boy stood at the gate and looked at it for half a day. Then he took the dagger his mother gave him and walked through the colorful flowers, step by step towards the end of the rainbow. A group of Japanese soldiers slowly walked out of the tunnel with a straight step. They were all blue like ghosts wandering the earth. Then they came up to the officers and reported. <laughs> The officers looked at the soldiers in front of him with a panicked expression, but his throat seemed to be half choked up. What the hell is going on here? Just an hour ago, the officers was released as a prisoner of war and returned home. As it passed a tunnel, there was a sudden well from inside. Then a dock with explosives came out. It kept barking at the officers. <laughs> The officers was so frightened that it took a few steps back. He confronted the dog for a moment and then turned around and walked into the dark tunnel. The tunnel was so silent that only his footsteps were left. The officers was a little scared. When he was out of the tunnel, suddenly there was the sound of stepping behind him. A blue soldier came out. The officers immediately recognized that it was his subordinate who had died in the war. <laughs> The officers was frowning in fear. He clearly remembered that this soldier was lying dead in his arms on the battlefield. But now he appeared in front of him in the form of a ghost. The soldier pointed to the lighted house in the distance and said that it was his home and that his parents were waiting for him to return. The officer said guiltily, you're really dead. That's a fact that can't be changed. The soldier had no choice but to accept the fact that he was dead. He reluctantly said his last goodbye to the officers. Then he turned around and went back into the tunnel. The officers watched the soldier leave. A few moments later, he was ready to continue on his way home. At that moment, there was a neat sound of footsteps in the tunnel. The officers took a closer look and found that they were all his fallen soldiers. The officers fought back the tears in the corners of his eyes. But there was nothing he could do. He understood that the soldiers did not want to leave this world, but he had to announce that the third squad had all been killed. He wanted to be forgiven by the soldiers. After that defeat, he also became a prisoner of the enemy and lived a miserable life every day. But war is a cruel thing. The officers begged the soldiers to go home and rest in peace. The dead should not return to the earthly world. <laughs> Watching the soldiers march away, the officers fell to his knees in pain. At that moment, the dog with the bomb strapped to it came out of the tunnel again, still barking at the officers. It was like the soldiers' resentment that would not go away. If Japan's Mount Fuji volcano the eruption will bring what consequences? First of all, it will cause the explosion of the surrounding nuclear power plant. In an instant, the whole city would be filled with smoke. 
people would start to flee, everyone would be covered in a red light. It was an apocalyptic scene, but Japan is too small, they have nowhere to run, they are forced to choose to jump into the sea. However, the water was already contaminated by nuclear power. In the end, only a few people were left alive, now only death awaits them. Looking at the colorful radiation clouds, the man came forward and said that the red clouds were uranium minus 239, one ten millionth of a gram of which can cause cancer. The yellow cloud is strontium-90, which can cause leukemia when it enters the body. The purple one is cesium-137, which will lead to the birth of a deformed fetus. The mother was overwhelmed with fear and could only hold her child tightly. It turns out that the man is in charge of the nuclear power plant. He told the woman that the radiation phenomenon was invisible to the naked eye. Adding color to them is to let people know how they died. Then he took off his glasses and tried to jump into the sea, but was stopped by a man. The woman also could not control her emotions and loudly denounced the lies of the nuclear power plant. At this moment, a light suddenly bright with a nuclear radiation cloud of smoke floated over. When the man turned around and found that the person in charge had jumped into the sea, now only a family of four was left to struggle in the radiation dust. But it was all in vain. In the blink of an eye, decades later, Japan has been reduced to rubble. One day, a man passing through the area encountered an ogre with horns on its head and a dandelion taller than a man and roses that grow into deformed shapes. All these things show the danger of nuclear radiation. The ogre told the man that he was originally human but had mutated because of the radiation and now they distinguish between the superior and inferior according to the number of horns on their heads. The lower class will become food. He escaped to this place so that he would not be eaten but it still couldn't escape his fate. At that moment, a strange sound came from not far away. The ogre saw that he was curious and brought him to the camp. Here a group of ogres were screaming in pain under the stimulation of nuclear radiation. Mankind seems to have conquered nature, but in reality, it has been destroyed. This is the end of the film called Dreams. We have created a huge amount of environmental pollutants that do not exist. We are driven by profit to develop dangerous products that could destroy humanity. We are constantly creating new ways to kill each other. Beginning with the cutting down of trees, people have gradually expanded the extent of their environmental damage. These hazards are reflected in human dreams. We are gradually moving away from myths and legends to fears that the environment we live in will be destroyed.